Hey guys, I just wanted to take a little bit of time today and talk to you about this issue that I've been having with a 2005 Chevy Tahoe with a 5.3 liter Vortec. Um, <clears throat> guy bought this vehicle and he drove it. He drove it quite a ways from home and it left, it broke down and left him stranded. Uh, he took it to some local mechanic shop up there and they, uh, in their infinite wisdom, decided to replace the fuel pump and it didn't fix the problem at all. So customer ended up spending, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred dollars uh, on something that didn't fix the issue at all. So we ended up towing it back here to my shop and I've been going through the list of things that could be causing this issue. Uh, <clears throat> the thing right off the bat is that it's not fuel related, it is ignition related completely. Uh, what ends up happening is uh, the PCM fails to register a signal from the crankshaft position sensor. And so obviously when that happens, everything shuts down. You don't get fuel, you don't get pulse width from your injectors, you don't get spark. I mean, completely dead. So uh, I hooked up I hooked up the scanner and verified that that's actually what's happening, that's losing you know, a signal from the, from the, from the sensor. And so I back probed it, did a lab scope. Uh, everything was looking normal. I mean, you gotta think this is a, a gremlin situation. It, it didn't happen all the time, but by the time I got it, it has actually happened pretty frequently. So I was able to start catching it. Uh, but when I took the starter out, cause on these ones, you gotta take the starter out to actually even view the crankshaft resistance sensor. I noticed that the sensor was new. <clears throat> And then I also noticed that the O2 sensors were new. And I also noticed that the knock sensors, the, well, I mean, the knock sensor wiring harness, anyways, was new. I didn't take off the intake manifold to look to see if the sensors were new. But I noticed that a lot of these sensors were new and figured I'd do a, a little more in depth here instead of just throwing parts at it and see what sticks. So I'll show you what I've come up with so far and I'll keep you updated on if this, uh, if this solves the issue. So I wanted to tell you some of the other issues that I was having with this vehicle. Um, <clears throat> so obviously we're having it, it just would straight up, it straight up die. Uh, another thing that was happening, which was really strange, uh, was that uh, it would buck uh, going down the road like it was a misfire, yet I would get no misfire codes. Uh, bank one was running, uh, was running super rich and so the o2 sensors were reading that it was that it was running uh running really hold on let's see here that it was running really lean and so it maxed out my long-term fuel trims to 25 it, it wouldn't go any higher than that and my short-term fuel trims just on that one bank were also at 25 and so and you could smell this thing you started up and it just smelled like raw gasoline and just I, i'm really surprised that it even ran uh, and in fact, I think it, it might have even taken out this guy's uh, this guy's catalytic converter because he drove it. You know, I mean, he drove it 1,200 miles, something like that. You know, with it running this way. But the thing is, is that a code was never thrown. They, it, it, it never threw a, a, a rich or a lean code. It didn't run. Uh, it didn't throw a catalytic uh, efficiency code, which obviously running that rich. I mean, it's running rich. The computer thinks it's running lean, but it's actually running extremely rich. You would think your catalytic efficiency uh, would also throw a code because there's no way for the catalytic converter to actually process that much uh, emissions. And so it would constantly show uh, that it wasn't working. And it never threw a code there. It never threw a code on the misfires. It never threw a code on... <coughs> uh, it, uh, it, it never threw a code on, 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 on the crankshaft position sensor. Now, uh, there's a whole bunch of codes that this thing should have thrown, and it never threw any of them. And, and, and my reasoning behind this is that what would actually happen is that the PCM would cut out. I'm not sure what those pins are yet, and maybe I'll research and find out exactly what pins those are to kind of connect the dots. But it, just looking at the situation, it just seems like the PCM would fail, and when the PCM would fail intermittently, it never gave it a chance to actually build uh, your your your, uh, your your PID tables, you know. So you never had your readiness monitors complete, and never had the opportunity to see that there was a failure happening to alert the driver that hey, there's an issue here. So, I mean, everything up to this point, and I've been I've been looking at this thing for the last couple of days now, you know, leads to this PCM issue. Oh, oh yeah, and another thing is is that. <clears throat> 
the cooling fans, this thing has electric cooling fans, would stay on. Even with the engine would be sitting at 185 degrees, and I know this because I looked at my scanner. The engine would be sitting at 185 degrees, and you shut the engine off, key off and key out and door shut, and the cooling fans would still run. It would still run, and it would completely drain the battery. They would never shut off. And in fact, when I got here this morning to pull this thing in, I had to jump it because the battery is dead. And as soon as I hooked up the jump box, guess what? Cooling fans came on. Uh, this is Utah. Uh, it was below freezing all last night. So I can assure you that the engine was nowhere near 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So all these things are really leading to this PCM issue. So we'll clean her up and we'll see if we can actually get this going. And hopefully this will help you guys out in your diagnostic endeavors in the future. So the first thing that I did is I pulled this PCM out. Lovely Delphi Automotive Systems. Uh, and I looked at the connections. I wanna see if I can kind of give you a good idea what's going on here. See, everything, it looks wet, but it's not. It's not wet at all. It's just the, it's just the epoxy that they use to create that seal. A little bit of dirt in there, but that's probably for me taking the unit out. And it'll obviously be cleaned before I put it back in. But as we continue down, there's the middle of the plug. You continue down, you look. And that one looks good. Okay, so we go up to the other connector. So far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good. Oh, 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 what's that? What is that? Eee, 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 eee. So that's obviously going to give us some issues. Uh, I did take apart this unit. I'm not going to do that for you right now because there's just really no need to. But what you can do, and you want to do this carefully, you want to make sure that. You're not going to shock the system through static electricity, but you just you take your Torx, remove these four bolts, two, three, four. And there's going to be four more, a size smaller, so it'd be a size, a size 20. So 25 did the outside, 20 did the inside. There's four long ones and two short ones. And now you just got to make sure that you look you know, make sure it does go in the right place when you put everything back together. And what I was looking for on the inside is a break of this rubber seal. Can you, you see how it's orange? All right. That actually goes around the entire unit and creates a seal. So I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any sort of uh, break in that seal to where water and moisture was getting in as well. When I took everything apart, everything on the back side of this plug, all the way down to the PCB board, looked good. I didn't see any corrosion. I didn't see any burnt circuitry. I, I went through and I looked at... I looked at every chip that I could possibly look, and I looked at every solder trace that I could see, and I didn't see any issues there. And so with any luck, what we're looking at is just an issue with this plug. And if we clean it off, we actually might be able to regain a connection and, and, and be able to get this thing running smooth. And if you look at the plug itself, you can see the plug doesn't look too bad. I mean, you can see that there's some corrosion in there, and it obviously it's going to need to be cleaned up. But I just I have this feeling that if I you know, if I'm able to clean this up and clean up these connections and make sure everything's still waterproof and watertight, uh, it's just we might be able to get this thing back on the road without spending any major major money um, major money getting this PCM rebuilt. So. You could get a used PCM and, and, and have them programmed, uh, have the dealership program. Uh, what I, every chance I get, if I need to replace these, I'll put a remanufactured one in. There's, there's a couple of resources out there that I use. The main one that I try to use is All Computer Resource. I found them on eBay, and they've been a wonderful company to work with. Uh, they have a really fast turnaround time on the PCM, uh, great communication. I haven't had any issues with them. I highly recommend this company. If you find yourself having a PCM issue and you've went through all the diagnostic flow charts and you know for a fact that it's the PCM that needs to be replaced, 
I would check out companies like All Computer Resource because it's cheap. It's like 100 to 150 bucks, and they go through, they fix what needs to be fixed, recondition it, program it, reprogram it uh, with your VIN and with your mileage and everything because you have to send them that information. And you get it back, and you plug the thing right back in, and it works. It's amazing. It's so hassle-free. I can't recommend these guys enough. And no, this isn't a plug for them. I, none of my videos are, are monetized, so this is all coming from experience. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, 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 and get this done, clean this up, uh, see if it, if, if it solves a problem. So after cleaning the, uh, those connections on the PC that I was talking about, I'm taking this thing for a test drive now on the foggy roads. It's great. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, I have no hiccups, I have no check engine lights, uh, got the scanner hooked up to it, all my live data looks good, field trips are good, no misfires. Um, taking it for about a 30 mile round trip. Uh, keep in mind that after you do a repair like this, especially if you're having problems with uh, the crankshaft position sensor, whether it's the sensor or the PC, I mean, anytime you mess with stuff like that. All right, you're gonna to wanna to do a, a, a camp crate variation learn, which I've done. So keep that in mind. Uh, and I guess that's it. And you guys have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave comments. Do what you gotta do.